the climbers, how to set up and play. The first thing you'll do is you'll take these two large white pieces, put them side by side, and now you're randomly going to place all the other blocks around these center pieces until they're completely covered. There are two important placement room rules. The first one is the bottom of a block must completely either touch the table or completely touch blocks already in play. You can never have any overage. So this block would be okay if it completely touched the bottom of the table or if it completely, the bottom, completely touched blocks in play, but you could never have any overage like that. The other important placement rule is that a block one of the sides has to at least partially touch the side of a piece already in play. You could never do a completely diagonal placement. So this block would have to at least partially touch the side of a block in play, and that would be legal. When touching blocks on the side, you have to imagine imaginary grid lines on the top of each block. So for example, this block right here can be split into four sections containing the size of each of the pawns. Whereas this one would have a line, imaginary line right there, a pawn could go there and there. This one could hold eight pawns or it would have eight sections. So when placing a block on the side, you've got to place it in a way that it would make an evenly split section for the pawns. You couldn't do it like that. You would have to do it like that or either fully touching. So here are some other legal placements. One is here, two is touching there, one is here. This one is evenly split, this one's completely touching on one side. So you'll continue legally placing all the pieces until the two long center white pieces are completely covered. Next you'll give each player, you'll randomly now assign the pawn color after all the blocks are placed, and then each player will get a complete set of a pawn, a blocking marker, a small ladder, and a big ladder. Randomly select a start player, and now play will proceed clockwise. On a player's turn, they may try to move their climber as many legal spaces as desired. A legal move is any space that matches the pawn's color, or is this neutral white color and the space has to at least be at the same level of where the pawn is or within reaching distance, meaning it's not taller than the height of the pawn. So this pawn could legally go there, it could legally go here, or it could start there, move here, it's still, that's okay, and so it's continuing to move. It can never move diagonal, so since this side of this piece is not touching a side of this piece, it could not move here, but he could move up here if that color was an eligible color. On a player's turn, either before, during, or after moving a pawn, they may pick up and move one block in the structure. They also have the option to rotate the block to any side that they would like. So in this example, the yellow player may would like, they'd like to continue their movement so they can pick up this block, they can rotate it, they can place it anywhere else in the structure following those setup placement rules, or they could leave it in the place where it was. All they did was rotate the block to allow continued movement for their pawn. Instead of doing that, maybe they decided they wanted to take this piece out. You can take pieces out that create separation or even leave part of the structure completely separated. That's legal, and they could have placed this some, somewhere else on the structure following those placement rules. Another rule about placing your blocks on the turn, if when placing your block you slide over other pawns, that's legal as long as you leave them a legal spot on the block that they originally occupied. One final point about moving blocks. So any block can be moved on your turn unless it's obviously blocked by another player. If it's occupied, it can't be moved. Also, if it was moved by the previous player, it can't be moved. But let's go back to our original example. So as we've seen on this player's turn, they've been able to move 
to blocks that were either their color, neutral, as long as it's on the same plane or within reach of their pawn, you can never move down on your turn, so that's not allowed. You also have the option of using one or both of your ladders on a move. You can never only use one ladder to move up a single block, but on a subsequent move, you could use another one of your ladders. So in this example, this pawn wants to move up here. He's gonna use his long ladder. Since it's a white space, that's legal. If one of these spots was a legal placement spot, they could use also their second, their small ladder to get up here, but we can see it's not legal and they've already used their option to pick up a block and place it on their turn so they cannot do that a second time. So this is where their movement's gonna end. Once you use one of your ladders, it's a once per game. So now this is removed from the game for the yellow player. I've added some pawns here to illustrate another rule. You have to have at least one free space on the piece that you're moving to. So since this block would have four imaginary sections and there's four pawns here, there's no space for this player to move. There'd have to be at least one free space for them to continue their movement. And since this is yellow, they could move up there. After the player has completed their movement and optional block move, they do have the option to place their blocker disc. Again, this is a once per game placement. So once it's used, it's gonna be removed when it gets to this player's turn again, but it basically freezes this block. It's important to remember that you can only place your blocker on an unoccupied block, but once we do that, that block can't be moved, it can't be entered, nor can other blocks be placed on top of it until we get back to this player's turn, which the freeze will be removed, the, mark, the blocker will get removed from the game, and then play will proceed with this player. Once a player completes their full turn, there's an optional bonus movement for all players. During this bonus movement phase, each player can move their pawn as many legal spaces as desired. They could even use their ladders, but remember this is a bonus movement, so they're not moving any blocks. Once all players in clockwise order have had a chance to advance their pawn during this bonus movement phase, we go clockwise to the next player for their full turn. Play is going to continue until none of the players in a row are able to move their pawn upwards. That will end the game. The pawn who's the highest when the game ends is the winner. If two pawns are at the same level, it's the pawn that got there first, wins and breaks the tie. And that should be everything you need to set up and play the climbers.